hello everyone welcome to the 15th lecture of the course in this module we have been discussing the activities of the self in the previous lecture we saw how the higher activities of the self guide the lower activities of the self so we saw that awakening to the activities of contemplation understanding and realization brings about definiteness and completeness in the activities of comparing and testing and we saw how the activities of imaging analyzing comparing selecting and testing get guided by the activities in the upper block block b1 now uh, the basic aspiration being the content of happiness we'll talk about the possible sources of happiness in this lecture so in this lecture we'll study the possible sources of happiness and explore about them now in the first course in uhv that is uhv1 and even in this course our major concern has been the fulfillment of the basic aspiration of a human being and that is continuity of happiness and we are trying to explore what would be the program to ensure happiness in its continuity the important conclusions of this investigation have been the following happiness and its continuity is ensured by right understanding right feeling and thought in the self so we have seen that right understanding right feeling and thought has to be ensured in the self by the self and we have also seen that the needs of the consciousness are fulfilled by the consciousness so the need for continuity of happiness in the self is going to be ensured in the self by the self and that would be ensuring the right understanding its completeness so this is depicted systematically in the diagrams of activities of the self which we have been studying in the last few sessions and we are recalling them for ready reference so this is something that we have discussed earlier also but just to refer to them so we talked about all these activities of the self and this module in particular we have been discussing all these activities so we have seen that block b1 that is the dimension of knowing includes the activities of realization understanding contemplation authentication and determination the dimension of imagination that is the dimension of thought includes the activities of imaging analyzing comparing selecting and testing and we have also seen how the higher activities of the self that is the activities in block b1 guide the lower activities and how the comparing gets guided by the higher activities how the testing gets guided by the higher activities based on which our behavior is mutually fulfilling our work is mutually fulfilling our participation is mutually fulfilling so we had seen in the previous lecture also that on one end we are working for ensuring the realization within and in expression it goes outside up to the human tradition so the more i am able to work to activate the higher activities of the self the more i am able to express myself outside in terms of undivided society universal human order and human tradition now this is our basic reference based on which we are going to discuss further so when i have the activities of block b1 activated then the right understanding and right feeling is ensured based on that i am able to see right feeling and right thought in the block b2 and this is the way to ensure the continuity of happiness something that we have been discussing so far we are also seen that understanding based on realization ensures bliss in the self contemplation based on understanding ensures satisfaction in the self and that means essentially that our desires get definite and that means essentially that our desires get definite our imaging gets definite when we are able to understand the harmony and we are able to contemplate on the participation in the larger order we are able to contemplate on the feelings which are naturally acceptable to us now when we have thought guided by understanding and contemplation then there is peace in the thought so when comparing is guided by contemplation there is peace in the thought similarly when the testing is guided by comparing there is happiness in the self so we are able to test happiness every moment now this is something that has to happen in the self by the self so when we say continuity of happiness it includes all the four bliss satisfaction peace and happiness presently we might feel happy momentarily and that is because the higher level activities may not be ensured so when they are guiding the lower activities then the happiness becomes continuous then there is continuity in peace satisfaction is ensured bliss is ensured and this is the state that we are working for so when we go to 
investigate into the possible sources of happiness the definite source is right understanding right feeling and thought so let us make some observation about what we are able to deduce so we'll see that with the awakening to the higher activity of the self we are able to see relationship in this nature and existence and under the guidance of this our desire that is feeling and thought are in line with relationship every moment this ensures that the self is in harmony within and therefore in a state of happiness every moment in continuity so when we are able to awaken ourselves to the higher activities of contemplation understanding and realization so we have the realization of coexistence we have the understanding of harmony and we are able to contemplate upon the relationship then there is definiteness and continuity in the feeling and thought and then we are able to ensure happiness in continuity this state of harmony at different levels of activity of the self is felt as one bliss and that is harmony between realization and understanding so when we are able to see the existence as coexistence the realization gets activated and with that the understanding gets complete and then there is harmony between realization and understanding and this is the state of bliss similarly satisfaction is the harmony between understanding and contemplation peace is the harmony between contemplation and comparing and happiness is the harmony between comparing and testing so when we say continuity of happiness it includes all these four states so we'll see that momentarily we are able to ensure happiness and that does not continue and that is because the activities in the upper block are not activated these higher level activities are not activated but when they are activated then there is continuity in the happiness then the happiness is continuous peace is continuous and this is what we are basically aspiring for are you able to see this try to find it out so when we say continuity of happiness it means ensuring all the four bliss satisfaction peace and happiness so you'll see that understanding feeling and thought of relationship harmony and coexistence leads to a state of continuous happiness this right understanding right feeling and right thought ensures continuous happiness and that is possible only when we are able to see the relationship as it is we are able to see the harmony as it is we are able to see the coexistence as it is and this is what is doable as a human being this is the program to ensure continuity of happiness so this is the source of continuous happiness so if you club them into two so right understanding in the self and right feeling in the self now right feeling will naturally ensure right thought in the self now right understanding would mean ensuring harmony at all levels right from human being to the entire existence and we'll see that right feeling means that i'm able to see the feelings of trust respect affection and other such feelings which are naturally acceptable to me clearly without any doubt any confusion and then the right feeling is ensured now with right understanding right feeling ensured we'll see few things one there's a definite completion point so there is a definite completion point we are able to see that yes this can be completed it is not something that i am always pining for this can be completed then continuity is possible so once completed it is going to continue we will also see that i no longer need to depend on anything outside for happiness because this is something definite in itself isn't it you will also see that it does not vary with time place and individual that there is definiteness so we can see all this with right understanding and right feeling and this ensures continuity of happiness in the self however when we look at what we have been doing to get happiness we have tried many possibilities and now we'll look into some of them and make a comparative study so we might have been trying for temporary happiness and that can be terminal excitement and what are those ways of ensuring temporary happiness so one possible source is to get right feeling from the other so let somebody trust me let somebody respect me let somebody have affection for me let somebody guide me or care for me so what we are doing here we are trying to borrow the feelings which are naturally acceptable to us from others we get happy temporarily by getting these feelings but we are also able to see a few things here one it is temporary it is not going to continue the moment the other is not able to share this feeling with me 
I do not feel happy. Then there is dependence on the other. So I'm always dependent on something outside, some other human being to get the right feeling. There is no completion point. Since there is no understanding of the feeling of trust, we are not able to make out whether this is trust or not, whether this is going to continue or not. So there is no definite completion point. And of course, continuity is not possible because we are fetching something from outside. We are depending on something from outside. A similar thing holds true when we try to ensure happiness in us by getting some favorable sensation through physical facility. So what is mentioned as PF here stands for physical facility. And we try to get favorable sensation from the body through physical facilities, through our sense organs. And there are five sense organs, sound, touch, form, taste, and smell. Here again, all those things will apply. The happiness that I try to get from outside through sensation is going to be temporary. There's going to be dependence on the body and the other to get such sensation. There's no definite completion point and the continuity is of course not possible. So as we discussed earlier also, we try to get some favorable sound, maybe some music, which may appeal to us. But of course, the happiness that I derive from the music will not continue forever. Some soft touch, which may make us happy, but temporarily. Some sight of some form, some look, which may again make us happy temporarily. It is not going to complete. It is not going to be definite also. Then some favorable taste from the tongue, some favorable smell from the nose. And if you articulate, we'll see that many times we have been trying to get happiness out of these sense organs. And the basic problem is that whenever you try to derive happiness from something outside, then happiness is not innate in you. It works as an influence on yourself and you are trying to borrow happiness from outside. And this is being Partantra. Partantra means you are dependent on something outside for happiness. This is a kind of enslavement. You are able to also see sometimes that this is not going to continue, but since you do not have the source of continuity of happiness and showed in you, you try this again and again. So what we do, we keep on changing the sources of temporary happiness, that is excitement, and try to derive happiness out of them one by one. And this has become somewhat phenomenal with the civilization. In the civilization, we can see that there are so many industries which are working to promote favorable sensation, or we are trying to promote various ways of getting uh, favorable feeling from the other. We'll also see that when we try to derive happiness from some favorable sensation through the body with some physical facility, then this sequence applies. It is tasty and necessary in the beginning. So as we mentioned earlier also, if some physical facility is necessary for you and it is giving taste to you. So you'll find that this is tasty as well as necessary in the beginning, but very soon it becomes unnecessary. And then it loses its taste also, and then it becomes intolerable. So any kind of music, any kind of food, any kind of sight, any kind of smell, any kind of touch gradually becomes intolerable. We need to also remember that at the core is our basic aspiration of continuity of happiness. So if something is not going to continue, will I keep on trying for continuity of happiness in that direction? Or I look for the sustained source, the continuous source of happiness. This is something to ponder upon. So think about this. If this is going to be temporary, do I need to keep working for this, trying to multiply this, trying to uh, look for various varieties of this, or do I need to come out of it? Do I need to work for the continuity of happiness? This is worth pondering. Now, if you look at the purpose of right understanding, right feeling and physical facility, it can be made out in this manner. So right understanding essentially means understanding of the harmony at all levels of being, right from human being to the entire existence. And it is going to happen in the self by the self. So this is for happiness in the self and there's a definite completion point. So this is something that becomes complete at some point of time. I'm able to work for it. I'm able to ensure it my, in myself. And this is what we are working for through this course also. If you look at the right feelings, the feelings of trust, respect, affection, care, guidance, reverence, glory, gratitude, love. So I can ensure these feelings in the self and that ensures happiness in me. That ensures also a definite completion point. When I get the feeling from the other, I'm not trying to derive happiness through this feeling from the other, but rather when this feeling is ensured in me and I'm getting this feeling from the other, then I'm able to evaluate the level of competence of the other. 
and I'm also able to make out my program for complementarity. So say if somebody is able to respect me, able to rightly evaluate me. So that helps me find out how I can get associated with the other, how I can be complementary in the relationship, isn't it? If somebody is not able to respect me, is not able to rightly evaluate me, then also I'm able to make the evaluation of the other with the right feeling ensured in me, with the trust ensured in me. And then I will to see that yes, this person needs to develop one's understanding. And then I am able to make out my program, how I can complement to develop the understanding in the other. So now getting this feeling from the other is no longer a source of happiness for me, but rather it is a source of my participation. It shows how I can be complementary to the other. Similarly, when I get the sensation through physical facility, through the body, through the sense organs, sound, touch, form, taste and smell. So I'm able to evaluate the state of physical facility. So if I get some food and it has a bad smell, I'm able to make out that this food is not fit for health. Okay. If the noise is very loud, then I'm able to see that this loud noise is not able to, is not fit for health. So I'm able to evaluate the state of physical facility. When I look at my room and I find the site not good. So I'm able to see that, yes, I have a role to play here to make the room livable. So I'm able to evaluate the state of physical facility to identify if it is okay for nurturing my body, protecting my body, isn't it? So whether this food is fit for nurturing my body, I use some cloth and the cloth may be very coarse, right? And I get one kind of sensation from the cloth. Then I'm able to see that this may cause rashes on my skin. In winter, if I'm using uh, just cotton and I'm feeling cold inside my body, then through the sensation, I'm able to make out that this cloth will not suffice to keep me warm. So I go for some warm clothes. So through the sensation, I'm able to nurture my body. I'm able to protect my body. So we'll see that sensation in itself is not something problematic. It becomes a problem when I try to derive happiness out of it. Are you able to see this? So sensation in itself is not a problem. It becomes a problem when I try to derive happiness out of it. Otherwise, I can rightly utilize the sensation to evaluate the state of physical facility to ensure health of my body. And I can also utilize the sensation for my behavior, work and participation in the larger order in terms of sharing knowledge, sharing my feeling. So when I am delivering this lecture, you are sensing the video, you are sensing the sound, isn't it? And thus the knowledge is being shared, the feeling is also being shared. So these are three purposes of the right utilization of the sensation. So with this, I'll suggest that you try to make out what kind of sensation do you get from the body and how it can be purposeful. What would be the right purpose for that? So list at least 10 physical facilities that you use, look into the purpose of these physical facilities and then try to see that the sensation that you're getting from the facility, what purpose it is serving. Is that doable? Try to do this. Now some prevailing notions of happiness and their outcome if you see. So one is to own or accumulate physical facility. So one possible source could be that the more I accumulate the physical facility, the more happier I am going to be. So for human being, physical facility is required, but it is not sufficient. So what we try to do out of this, try to derive some pleasure from favorable sensation. And again, the same sequence applies. So if you look at the prevailing notions of happiness and their outcome. So one prevailing notion is that if I own or accumulate physical facility, and that also in unlimited manner, I'm going to be happy in continuity. So one kind of effort that can be seen is to accumulate physical facility without ever being able to know how much is required. So you'll see that for human being, physical facility is required, but over and over physical facility, we require the right feeling relationship, we require the right understanding. And if that is not ensured, we try to ensure continuity of happiness by accumulating more and more, by holding more and more. The second possible source could be pleasure from favorable sensation. That is something that we discussed and we'll see that the same sequence applies here. It is testy and necessary in the beginning, but gradually it becomes intolerable. 
and the third source could be like getting attention of others getting appreciation of others and these are the favorable feelings so if i do not understand what respect is i try to be happy by getting attention of others so i choose my clothes i mean my language my look in such a way so that people are able to pay attention to me they are i'm able to grab their attention isn't it i'm able to get their appreciation if somebody appreciates me i feel very elated if somebody does not appreciate me i feel sad i feel unhappy so you see that these favorable uh, feelings when i try to borrow from other then i may either get excited or depressed but it can never be continuous and as you discussed earlier there is going to be dependence on the other and it cannot be continuous so these are various sources of uh, happiness that is prevalent in the society and we can see their outcome also so sometimes we feel happy and then we feel excited and sometimes we feel unhappy and then there is depression and this becomes a kind of cycle if you look at a single day when you get appreciated you feel happy when you not get appreciated you feel unhappy when you get the appreciation you feel happy when you do not get the appreciation you get unhappy when you get some favorable sensation you feel happy if you do not get the favorable sensation you feel unhappy and there could be cycles of happiness and unhappiness in a single day because we are trying to borrow happiness from outside so a major shift that is expected from this course is that the happiness becomes innate to you you no longer need to depend on anything outside for happiness this is what we are trying to emphasize this is what we are trying to bring out through the discussion or through the lecture now when we fail to ensure continuity of happiness through these methods and we are in a state of unhappiness then we take to escape from unhappiness and what would be the possible ways of escaping so overeating over sleeping sometimes going to intoxication so gutka is something that is consumed in the north which is another word for tobacco going for alcohol going for drugs and we can see these problems in the society people are not happy in continuity and they are resorting to such measures so food is required for nurturing the body but if i feel depressed i may go for eating much more than what i require and this is causing obesity this is causing this is causing many health issues also then over sleeping when you feel depressed you try to sleep more than what is required for the rest of the body or one may go for consuming such uh, things we can see that the consumption of drugs is on the rise the more the society is getting physical facility the more such consumption is also on the rise then the other ways could be resorting to violence and if all these measures do not work then one may also go for suicide i just think can these ever help you escape from unhappiness in continuity no our basic purpose is not to escape from unhappiness or depression our basic purpose is to ensure continuity of happiness and we can see that the students are caught up in such practices every week or every uh, fortnight we keep on getting news from the media when students are caught taking such kind of measures even in uh, higher education institutions we are getting news of suicide so you'll see that ultimately we keep on oscillating between excitement and escape and this is not the state of happiness for sure so try to make out whether you also try to escape from unhappiness in this way so you may also explore whether you get such thoughts such ideas whether you try to escape from unhappiness and resort to any such measure this is something worth evaluating oneself so you'll be able to see that this is only excitement and escape and this is not happiness so we try to get temporary happiness that is excitement from outside through these measures consumption of physical facility or enjoyment of favorable sensation and through receiving favorable feeling from the others and if this is not met then we try to escape from unhappiness through these measures something that we discussed and we'll see that we are caught up in this kind of loop so you get caught up in this loop you try to go for temporary excitement and if this is not fulfilled then you try to escape from unhappiness and that is also temporary and this is a state of animal consciousness isn't it as a human being we need to ensure continuity of happiness and this is the basic purpose of education why we are working so hard in education so that we are able to ensure a life of happiness in continuity 
but many times you see that even after the formal education is complete we get caught up in these kind of things when we try to ensure happiness temporarily and then if that is not met we try to escape from the unhappiness and we also get caught up in such measures isn't it so you can also evaluate oneself you can also evaluate the state of society today the way our young generation is moving the way the society is moving are we caught up in this kind of loop isn't it try to find it out so you will be able to see that happiness in continuity is going to be ensured only by ensuring right understanding within right feeling within and we might be caught up in these problems we might be trying to work for temporary happiness we might be trying to escape from unhappiness we might be caught up in this kind of loop but for from here we have to make this transformation then only we can say that we are developing as a human being here we are in the state of animal consciousness but when we are able to transform from here to here we are able to transform to human consciousness now i can relate so many things about how the society is caught up in ensuring temporary happiness trying to fetch happiness from outside trying to fetch happiness through sensation trying to fetch happiness by getting some favorable feeling but that will only an elaboration on the problem so i will not detail upon it the thing to detail upon is how to ensure the right understanding right feeling within oneself but for self evaluation i will say that evaluate yourself evaluate the current state of society and try to see how we can ensure this kind of transformation which is desirable isn't it this is what is desirable through education and education is meant for this only so the way out is something to be explored so you'll see that we keep on oscillating between excitement and escape and we are not able to ensure continuity of happiness and then the only way to get out of this vicious circle is to work through method 1 that is ensuring the right understanding right feeling and thought which can lead to continuity of happiness and that would essentially mean understanding feeling and thought of relationship harmony and coexistence which can ensure the state of continuity of happiness within and this guarantees a state of happiness peace satisfaction and bliss so we need to also uh, make a serious evaluation of oneself whether we have to continue with this kind of oscillation or we have to work for this in this course it is intended that you are able to decide for yourself that yes i need to work for continuity of happiness and i do not have to get caught up in this vicious cycle of excitement and escape this is certainly not desirable isn't it this is what is desirable and you see that the moment we are able to see that this is the source of continuity of happiness our whole imagination starts getting transformed in place of planning to go for excitement or to go for escape we start planning for how to ensure happiness in continuity think over this because it is you who is going to make a decision here it is you who is going to evaluate oneself it is you who is going to be aware of the current state of your imagination so how do we work through method 1 so to work through method 1 that means to ensure the right understanding feeling and thought in the self so that it can lead to continuity of happiness and that essentially means to ensure the realization of coexistence understanding of harmony and contemplation of relationship in the self and that can only lead to the state of continuity of happiness so one possible way is to work through the three exercises that we are mentioning here under the practice session and as you have been doing exercise 1 so if you see exercise 1 is observing the self by the self something that we started in our practice exercises and this helps us to see that the feeling of relationship harmony and coexistence is a naturally acceptable feeling for us and if we ensure that the feeling i have in my imagination at this moment of time is in accordance with it then i can be in a state of happiness at this moment and if we can ensure this every moment we can be in a state of happiness every moment in continuity so in exercise 1 if you look at all the steps so we start by observing the feeling at step 1 then we try to see whether this feeling is comfortable for us or not whether this feeling is naturally acceptable to us or not and who is taking the decision and then we try to see what is the basis of taking the decision and we also try to see what is naturally acceptable to us feeling of relationship or opposition harmony or disharmony coexistence or struggle 
and if relationship harmony and coexistence are naturally acceptable then we go to ensure it and we go to ensure it in our living also so this is something that we have been doing this will take us from the state of animal consciousness from human consciousness so presently when we are trying to borrow happiness from outside by fetching some favorable feeling from the other or favorable sensation from the body in place of that we are able to ensure the right feeling in us based on right understanding so this is how we proceed through method 1 so if you look at exercise 2 in exercise 2 we are trying to ensure that the state of the self can remain unaffected from any influence of the body or any external input and rather we can respond to them in a mutually fulfilling manner so in exercise 2 we are trying to observe the coexistence of self and body and we are trying to see that the sensation that i get from the body how do i associate a meaning to that now the basis of association of the meaning to the sensation may be either based on some preconditioning or right understanding then we try to see what would be the right understanding here and this helps us transform as a human being in exercise 3 uh, basically it facilitates the process of reaching to that state of realizing that self is submerged in space and that need for ensuring right understanding feeling and thought of relationship harmony and coexistence which can lead to the state of continuity of happiness this is fulfilled in space for the self at least that provision is there we have to realize it through our effort maybe through these three exercises so in exercise 3 we are trying to look at the submergence how am i submerged in space how is the body submerged in space we are not going to do this exercise in this course presently but some idea has to be there and observing the self by the self observing the coexistence of the body with the self we are able to see the possibility of observing one self submerged in space if you see in exercise 2 at the seventh step we are trying to observe this so through exercise 1 exercise 2 and exercise 3 we may be able to observe this we may be able to ensure right understanding right feeling and thought in us and this is an effort in that direction now based on this we can have some assignment for today so you have to list down the methods you have been trying for ensuring continuity of happiness so you can list down uh, in what ways you have tried to ensure excitement for you in what ways you have tried to escape from unhappiness for you so you can mention their achievements also then the second question is do you see the possibility of having continuity of happiness through these methods so you may respond either by saying yes or no but you can also explore a bit and see what kind of possibility you are able to see and if yes then in what manner the third question is now what is your conclusion after all this investigation happiness is or has to be the basic nature of the self or it can be derived through influence of others outside now the major take away with all these exercises that we are able to see that happiness is my innate nature it is my basic nature i do not have to depend on anything outside for happiness if you are able to see this clearly i'll say that the course is highly successful for you this is the major take away that we want to derive from this course so try to observe this whether you are able to see it or the clarity with which you are able to see that happiness is something innate to you it is not something to be derived from outside and in the light of above study make an in depth analysis of the problem that we are facing world over and their reasons their possible solutions and process of implementation so with this will give an idea that all the problem that we are having in the world today are basically because we do not have the right understanding of happiness we do not have the right program for happiness and somehow we are misled by ensuring happiness or we are trying to ensure happiness through these external sources which can never be continuous never be definite there is always some dependence outside and there is no completion point so will, this will give you uh, the basic formulation for a program at the level of society so that we are able to ensure happiness for all prosperity for all so today in this lecture we try to see the possible sources of happiness and we could see how right understanding right feeling and thought can be ensured in the self and that will lead to the continuity of happiness the other measures that we are trying today either through sensation from the body or by getting some favorable feeling from the other can never be a source of continuity of happiness 
that will always be indefinite temporary there will always be some dependence outside and there is no definite completion point there so try to contemplate on this try to think over this thank you